For our lingualized occlusion, we're using a 33 degree upper against a zero degree um, uh, portrait, or in this case, a 10 degree anatoline tooth. If you've got steep condylar inclinations, you usually want to use something with a little bit of cusp height, like an anatoline. Um, you're not looking for buccal contacts on these mandibular teeth, just maxillary lingual cusp to the fossa on the lower teeth. In this particular exercise, you're going to be setting your condylar inclination at approximately 30 degrees. Um, and to try and make sure that we center things over the mandibular ridge, you should have had a reference line scribed down the middle of the ridge there, and we're going to set the mandibular teeth first um, so that the central fossa is along that line. Um, you can see that if we set all of these teeth here, it's going to go right to the very back end of the denture, and so in this particular case, we're going to set one premolar and two molars. That will give us a sufficient occlusal table uh, and won't cause us to start to set teeth on this ascending portion of the, <coughs> of the ridge here. We don't want to do that because uh, tilting and tipping, sliding of the ridge, of the denture on. To set the mandibular uh, teeth, the posterior teeth, I just take away the wax, very similar to what I did uh, previously uh, for the anterior teeth. And again, uh, make that uh, molten where you're going to put the tooth in. If you're choosing a single premolar, um, your options are to choose either the first or the second premolar. Choose the uh, first premolar. There's a little bit more of a transition from uh, the, uh, the uh, flatness of the uh, canine tooth to the premolar. So I'm going to choose the first premolar and I want to make sure that I get that down far enough uh, in, into my occlusion rim that it's not sticking above the occlusal table. We'll use the opposing um, uh, occlusal rim to make sure that we've got the proper height. When I'm starting to do that now, I'm finding that my tooth is starting to hit the record base. You can see it's above the level of the canine. Um, so in this particular case, I'm actually going to have to adjust the neck of the tooth so that I don't end up with a huge overbite for that particular tooth. When you're adjusting denture teeth, make sure you keep your gloved fingers away from the burr. Uh, we're going to take that down, so we, and we're not going to go past where the cervical neck of the tooth is, but we'll take off the root, the root portion of that particular tooth. And I'm going to, as you're seeing here, I'm going to be moving around so I keep that nice roundness to the cervical portion of the tooth. And I'm also going to thin it out a little bit from the lingual surface of the tooth so I can tuck that in a little bit closer um, to the uh, record base. So I've adjusted my uh, premolar here. I'm going to soften that wax again. I want to make sure that I can get that at the proper level. That's looking better there now. If you find you don't have quite enough wax to keep that tooth where you want, you can soften up a little ball of wax, just something like that, push it into place, as long as it's dead soft, and then push the tooth on top there. That will sink into the wax very easily because it's still really, really soft, but it'll give you enough body to keep the tooth in position there. From the side, we want to make sure that that's not too high, pushing it down there a little bit again. And checking that with our uh, maxillary. Probably got my premolar a little bit too far forward, so I'm going to move everything back and I'm going to move those anterior teeth a little bit back so I don't get a cusp to cusp clashing of the premolar and uh, the canine tooth. So I'm going to move the premolar back to where I want that to be. I'll end up with a little bit of a gap between the teeth, and what I'll have to do is move the rest of these anterior teeth around just a little bit at a time. There might be a slight bit of spacing in between of them, but if I spread that out, you'll probably never even notice that there's a little bit extra space there.
I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it looked like my midlines were off here a little bit, and that's probably why I started off having a bit of a problem getting my canine relationship on this side. So not only am I moving these teeth over a little bit, I'm going to actually move the teeth on the opposite quadrant, the um, contralateral side, over a little bit just to help take up some of that space. And you can see by the time that I move all of those teeth around a little bit, it doesn't really look like I've got a huge diastema in any particular place. just soften my wax there again and you can see it doesn't really look like I have a problem there. I've got a much better canine relationship uh, and with my premolar there as well. I'm going to start to take away some of the wax then for my molars. You can see me putting the, uh, the molars here along the flat plane of the occlusion and also as we look from above you should be able to see that line that you've drawn for where the middle of the ridge is uh, corresponds to where you're placing your central fossa. We'll just uh, soften the wax around there and then we'll place the second molar. We've removed the wax for the second molar and we're going to place the tooth in there Again, look from the side to make sure that it's coming close to where your occlusal plane is. And from above, uh, should line up with that line, that reference line, uh, from the arch here down the center of the ridge to the front. Again, soften a little bit, but not all of the wax around the tooth. You might still have to make some changes, so don't get too much uh, wax around the teeth at this stage. On the lingual surface, you can see that we've got some gaps there. We're just going to fill those in with some of our molten wax. And we'll remove some of this excess wax at the very back, which we don't need. As you get that filled in, you can just use your torch once in a while to sort of smooth over the wax.